Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome again to JUS 261, uh, Judicial Administration. Uh, this is Jim Doyle, and I just wanted to take a few minutes and just go over uh, our rubric uh, outline and guidelines for uh, discussion boards and for this week's writing assignment. Um, and part of this is just so you know how to access your rubric and guidelines to the writing assignments because I think they're critical for you to understand so that you can gain the maximum number of points from these assignments as we progress through our course together. All right. Uh, anyhow, to access the assignment guidelines and rubrics, just click on uh, the course information here on the left hand side of the screen uh, and that'll take you right here. And so the assignment guidelines and rubrics are located right there. So if we click that open, uh, we see all the guy, all the guidelines and rubric uh, for each of our assignments that we have throughout our time together. Uh, since we're going to be working uh, this week, we have a discussion board, and then we have our, our module one short paper. Uh, I thought best if we just went and, and discussed those two specific uh, rubrics. And so you have an understanding as to what we're looking for when you submit the assignments. Uh, so basically, as an overview, a rubric is a scoring tool that represents the performance expectations for an assignment or a piece of work. Uh, a rubric divides an assignment into component parts and provides clear description of the characteristics of the work associated with each component at varying levels of mastery and uh, we'll point that out here in just a minute. So let's take a look at uh, the undergraduate discussion board rubric. So let's click that open. Uh, one of the key things for the discussion board rubric, at least ways for module one, is that the due, uh, the time that they're due is Eastern time in module one and then in modules two through seven it's your local time and then in Module 8, it changes um, to uh, Saturday at 11.59 p.m. of your local time. So as we get more towards the end of the course, I'll just remind you about that. But it's pretty clear in our syllabus. So again, uh, the rubric here is designed so that you can earn a maximum number of points as you prepare your thoughts for each of our discussion board assignments that we may have. Um, here are the criteria. So you're basically to, to compose a post of one to two paragraphs. Uh, this tells you when your um, initial post needs to be submitted. And typically it's going to be by Thursday um, of each, each week. Um, and then additionally it says you're taking into consideration materials such as course content and other discussion boards from the current module in previous modules when appropriate. Make sure you are using proper citation methods for discipline when re re referencing scholarly or popular resources. And so we will be using APA format. And I'll send you guys a, a good link on APA format just in case you don't have access to it or aren't familiar with it. Uh, but I think it's a, it's a great way to uh, be familiar with what we're looking for in terms of uh, APA formatting for your references and so forth. So just remember, if you're going to use a reference or a source, you need to properly cite it. And so I'll provide you with that information. All right. So again, this is for your initial post. You must do the following. For your response post, which are two, so you have to do two response posts, you must do the following. Again, reply to at least two different classmates outside your own initial post thread. Uh, this is when they're due. Again, the first week, module one, they're due at... Uh, uh, by Sunday at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time, and then Modules 2 through 7, they're due by Sunday at 11.59 p.m. your local time, okay? And then Module 8, again, is a little bit different because uh, the way that that uh, Module 8 week is structured. Uh, for this, you're to demonstrate more depth and thought than simply stating that I agree or you are wrong. Um, so guidance is going to be provided for each discussion prompt. So uh, the discussion prompt uh, may ask you, for example, that if uh, there's three choices you choose, then it may say select someone who chose a different option than you. So we, we can have some discussion and dialogue, and so you can learn from each other as we progress through some of our topics. Okay. Um, so in terms of feedback, I'll be using the uh, 
grading rubric, and this is what the grading rubric will look like. So the grading rubric is going to uh, evaluate you on your comprehension of the topic, the timeliness, in other words, was it submitted on time? Engagement, how well you engage and continue to promote a dialogue with your classmates on uh, the specific topic for the week. And then your writing, the mechanics part of it, the spelling, grammar, are your thoughts clearly um, uh, outlined uh, in, in your response and so forth. So as you prepare your uh, discussion threads, uh, please make sure you take time to review the discussion board rubric, uh, understand what the guidelines are, okay, and then take a look at the rubric itself so that you can earn the maximum number of points possible. So this is the discussion board rubric. Uh, again, most of you should be familiar with it. If not, this is what it is. This is what it looks like. This is how you're going to be evaluated. So the categories were from exemplary, proficient, needs improvement, or to not evident. All right? Uh, and then I will provide you with comments below each of these categories so that you can um, learn and um, build upon uh, your previous assignment so uh, you can produce a, a discussion board assignment that is really outstanding. All right, so again, this is the discussion board rubric for undergraduates. So again, take a look at that. Make sure you're familiar with it. Understand the, the critical elements and the levels of evaluation, okay? Now, also this week, we have a short paper that's due. So we have a module one short paper guidelines and rubric. So let's click this open so we understand what we're doing here. So this is a short paper. And this short paper has you examining the American federal court system. Uh, this paper provides an opportunity for you to check and demonstrate your knowledge of how a case moves through the three tiers of this court system, from the trial courts to the United States Supreme Court. Uh, reference your text, reading, and the module resources in your submission. So use references. Uh, the textbook is uh, a very good text. It has a lot of information. Uh, this week I am offering a short video on the federal court system, which uh, I hope you take time to look at because it is really, uh, it's a easy to follow little mini lecture on how the federal court system is set up, and I think you'll find it pretty useful. Now for this uh, particular assignment in module one, the short paper assignment, uh, specifically the following critical elements must be addressed. So these are things you need to make sure you put in your paper. Number one is tiers. Describe the three tiers of the American federal court system. So the federal court system is broken up by your district courts, your circuit courts of appeals, and the United States Supreme Court. And each tier has a specific function within the federal court system. All right, so you'll get a lot of this information from reading in your textbook. Uh, also, again, you can take a look at that video that I posted in the announcement. All right, so you're going to be evaluated, first of all, on tiers and your ability to describe each of those tiers and what their function is within the federal court system. Next is their roles. Describe the role that each tier plays in, in the American federal court system, and we briefly talked about that already. Types of cases. Identify the types of cases heard in each of the federal courts and which federal court courts hear them. So uh, the district courts, for example, are the trial courts. That's where everything starts in the federal system. It typically starts in the district court unless there is something that gives, for example, there might be a situation where um, a situation arises between, uh, let's say, California and Arizona over water rights for the Colorado River, and uh, by law, that is automatically heard by the United States Supreme Court. They have jurisdiction over those type of things. But mostly, uh, when, you, when you're trying to figure out the types of cases, uh, most criminal cases and so forth start at the federal court level at the district courts. Okay, so take a look. Uh, your book is very helpful in terms of identifying the types of cases that are heard in each of the federal courts and which federal courts hear them, okay? Identification of the court. Identify which court a federal case arising from your hometown would start. So you're gonna to have to be familiar with the, the federal jurisdiction, um, uh, the mapping of uh, the court districts of the United States uh, and that video I, I offer you uh, clearly identifies where each of these circuits are located. Okay, so for example, California is located in the Ninth Circuit and that's outlined in that video. Uh, some states have more than one um, 
district within the court system. So California, because of its size, might have a central district, a southern district, a northern district, in which California is broken up into pieces uh, for purposes of courts. Uh, your state, depending on its size, may not. It may just have one uh, district, the district of Vermont, for example. So uh, identify uh, the court, the federal court system in which a case arising in your town would begin. So you need to understand and look at the maps, look at where you live, and figure out what federal court district you are in. Um, so the video will help with that. Uh, next is the process. So explain the process by which the hometown case might reach the U.S. Supreme Court, identifying any other court or courts in which the case might be heard. So as a case goes through an appeal process, we, we end up going through our three tiers, okay? And so that's where that three-tiered system comes into play. So the process, and again, reading your textbook, watching the videos will no doubt help you with that. Guideline submissions, your short paper must be submitted as a one to two page Microsoft Word document with double spacing, and then tells you the font size and margins and so forth. Uh, the key part of this here is at least three sources um, cited in an APA format. So you need to have three references as you prepare this assignment, okay? At least three sources cited in APA format. Again, I will provide you guys with a link on a good reference for uh, using APA format in case you aren't familiar. All right, so um, again, make sure you understand the guidelines for submissions because as I evaluate your work, I will be evaluating it based on uh, these critical elements. So the critical element of tiers is right here, roles, types of cases, identification of the court in your hometown, the process, and articulation of response. So again, make sure that you provide and evaluate each of these um, elements and then or make sure you read what it is that it's going to require for you to get an exemplary or proficient or needs improvement or not evident uh, rating uh, as you prepare your paper. Okay, so again, uh, this first assignment, the following critical elements must be addressed. So again, you're going to take a look at those guidelines for submissions. It's a short paper, one to two pages, a double space. It tells you the font size and at least three sources cited in APA format. So again, you can use your textbook. Um, any other references that you can come across, you can uh, go through the internet, uh, see what you can find there. Anything you can to help you, uh, you can use as a reference, okay? So just make sure you complete that part of the assignment. Uh, and then again, here's the critical elements, and these are the rankings for each of those categories. All right, so again, um, please take the time to be familiar with the, the rubric uh, itself, and the assignment guidelines. I think they're going to be very important as you uh, progress through the class. All right. Uh, that way, before you click the submit button, you, you could take one last look to make sure you include all essential parts of the assignment. Uh, if you do that, you should do very well. Okay. Um, so just again, please make sure you take the time to, to work on that. Uh, interestingly, there's an uh, interview consent form here. And I just want to bring that up just for a quick second because the module four you will need to complete a short paper assignment that involves interviewing a staff member of a local court. Uh, so you should start to consider who they would like to interview. Uh, so start considering who you'd like to interview. Uh, and then next week, there's a little assignment that we have for you. It's a non-graded assignment, but it's to, to further explain this upcoming assignment. Um, but anytime you're involving in an interview process at the, at the university level, you need to have an interview consent form. Uh, so the interview can take place a couple of different formats uh, uh, over the telephone, in person, maybe via email, Skype, things like that. So there's different ways you can you can conduct the interviews. But again, start thinking about that. Don't put it off to the last minute. Uh, start making your phone calls. Start making your contacts. Um, uh, throughout the, the class, you'll learn in this week and next week uh, who makes up the courtroom group so you can figure out who it is that that you may need to uh, interview, okay? So I hope that helps, but again, uh, pay attention to the rubrics. I think they're very important, and make sure you research all the assignment guidelines before you submit the assignments, okay? Thank you so much, and have a great week, everyone. I'll see you on Blackboard.